With us now on the phone is Mark Rosenker. He's a former chairman of the National Transportation Safety Board, as well as a CBS News contributor. So, Mark, uh, you joined us yesterday right after this happened. You were so informative, even though we didn't have a lot of information. Now the investigation has just begun. What has it uncovered so far? I, th I think we have a key finding here in that uh, mental fatigue seems to have been the cause of the uh, departure of the number 13 fan blade on the uh, leading part of the hub out of 24 blades. So at least we have that to begin with. And uh, fatigue of metal is certainly something that needs to be examined very carefully and to see if that was also part of the problem uh, two years ago on the same similar type of uh, uh, CFM 56. So metal fatigue, is that not something that uh, would be obvious <laughs> when uh, this engine was being checked just over the weekend? Not obvious unless you did an ultrasonic a type of examination. We don't know what they did. We do know that the manufacturer uh, several years ago put out a uh, what they call a service bulletin. That's a recommended action. It's not necessary to uh, do everything that the manufacturer is suggesting, but it's 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 very uh, typically it's very uh, well regarded and and uh, uh, the operators really take these service bulletins seriously. Later, the uh, the equivalent of the European FAA EASA put out what they call an airworthiness directive. That is a requirement to do this type of inspection, but they didn't show any type of urgency. They said within a certain number of months you ought to be looking for this. The FAA was about ready to put out an airworthiness directive. I would suspect that's going to be coming out very quickly and requiring to do this in a, a short period of time. Mark, uh, as we've certainly focused on the loss of life, which is tragic indeed, and uh, the actual happenings with that engine, I just want to focus a little bit on uh, the pilot. All the passengers uh, off that flight said she's a real American hero. She's a former United States Naval pilot, fighter pilot. She was one of the first female pilots to fly an F-18. Uh, they say that she's being compared now to Captain Sully Sullenberger, who you'll recall obviously landed that plane, that United Airlines plane on the Hudson River. Uh, passengers have reported her coming uh, into the back of the plane after all this was said and done to talk to each of the individuals individual passengers. Um, we really, I mean, engine failure or, you know, metal fatigue, that's one thing. But the pilots that we have in this country flying our planes are second to none. Absolutely, uh, Vlad. You're, you are 100 percent correct. Remember that these people are, are, are practicing these kinds of maneuvers, these kinds of incident uh, activity while they're in the simulator. Therefore, they have tremendous skills, tremendous practice to be able to handle these kinds of emergencies. Now, again, you've got to have a great deal of talent and you've got to have a great deal of cool. And I think that was displayed by both of these pilots in uh, getting this aircraft down quickly and on the ground safely. Mark, you know, I'm one of those people that likes to sit by the window seat. And uh, when I heard about this, I thought maybe the window seat is not a safe place to be. Or maybe I should avoid row 17 or other rows in the area of the engine. Is that something to consider? Well, I, this is such a rare occurrence. I got to tell you, in my career, I have never heard of a window being taken out by shrapnel from a, an engine that, in fact, is coming apart. But that's not to say it couldn't ever happen again, but it is, again, so rare that um, when you think in terms of the number of operations that we do every day, 30,000 flights a day without incident, without accident, and uh, when you look at that, we're talking since the last fatal accident, which occurred back in uh, February of 2009, it was Colgan Airways going from Newark to Buffalo. Um, we have not had a fatal accident in the United States when an American carrier in more than nine years. And I think that's a tribute to the uh, equipment that they're flying, the oversight of the FAA, the maintenance of everyone. This, though, is, is an extraordinary, really tragic accident that must be understood so that we can prevent it from happening again. Yeah, uh, Mark, one of the things, I, I, Anne-Marie and I were talking about this, and I, I'm a nervous flyer, and uh, I always have my seatbelt uh, tightened really tight across, especially when we're going through turbulence. And I don't know what the seatbelt situation for um, this victim was, but, uh, you know, the, the, it's not for nothing that they tell us to tighten up those seatbelts when the pilot turns the fastened seatbelt side on, light on. I think in You're this right. case they didn't get much of a warning at all. I, I keep it on all yeah. the time.
That's right, and, and you should keep it on right away. You never when you, you never know when you're going to get clear or turbulent and be popped up. Um, we don't know the survival factors. People are part of this NTSB investigation. They'll be looking at that seat very carefully. They'll be looking at the belt. They'll be trying to figure out how tight it was around the woman. If, in fact, it failed, they'll have all kinds of answers after this investigation continues. All right, Mark Rosenker, always great to have you for your analysis. Mark, thank you very much. Thanks, Vlad, Anne-Marie.